Hey, coming up right now, there's a new monument in D.C. and it's causing quite a stink for one former speaker. Also coming up, Amazon is giving its employees an ultimatum. And if they don't like it, they're being shown the door. Uh -oh, a little bit later on, guests at Sea World Park actually get a lifetime experience, no extra charge. <laughs> we promise, won't cost you a thing. <laughs> Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hey everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. What? You are? <laughs> English. Yeah, I forgot about that. We welcome you to the show called Daily Flat. Woo! We got our hype team back there. We also got uh, Maddie Doolittle sitting over this way to my right. So my we're, my wife and I are going to an event this weekend in Texas, and so she had to buy all these dresses and do a little like fashion show. She just turned for... 14. This is our constant year. <laughs> What's it called? Quinceanera. Uh, but so she had all these dresses that I had to go return to uh, the Amazon stuff. Oh, at I the, hate at doing the, that. At the, uh, Whole Foods. Why is it so therapeutic to return stuff like that and then see the return like notification and go, I think it, I just made money? Because your money went back into yeah, it. it. Right? But you know they get you though. How's that? Because if you don't specify where you want the money to be credited to, yeah. it ends up back in an Amazon credit. So, so you end up spending it anyway. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, you have to, if you want it back into your account yes. and that sort of thing. One thing I do love about that is a lot of times you don't even have to put them in a package. Oh, you it's drop the best. It yeah. Now, it's also done a lot because there was this whole system that, that would be used um, where you'd buy something, but you return it, and then you go get something else. So it's not, oh, I didn't spend any money. That was the no, Kohl's turnaround. Yeah. That was I only spent 20 bucks. That was the Kohl's turnaround where they'd give you $5 in Kohl's cash. Well, no, this is, well, you're right. Yeah. But I'm just talking about like, like the wife would go, oh no, I exchanged it, and I, and, but I got yes. this, so it's only ten dollars more. Well, right. now you spent sixty dollars or whatever plus ten dollars. But she's trying but to I convince like you, you only yeah. spent she only spent Thank ten. Thank you. Yes. yes, I know, I know. That's shopping <laughs> math. I've shopping done that math. before. There we go. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Have you heard about this new lawsuit against JetBlue? Oh my gosh, tell me about it. I love okay, JetBlue. so remember the McDonald's hot cup of coffee yes. lawsuit, yes. right? Whether mm -hmm. that really existed or not, I'm still not sure because there's been so many different stories. This new lawsuit on the books. This woman was a passenger on JetBlue. She gets a little ice cream sandwich, right? She bites into the ice cream sandwich. It's frozen solid. She ends up losing a tooth <laughs> on the flight, gets off, has to go to a, an immediate emergency dental appointment to have her tooth extracted and then having something put back in. She's suing JetBlue for the frozen ice cream sandwich. I think that's... Okay, first of all, you got to know when you hold any kind of food, like, okay, well, this you is feel not it's a little that. solid. All right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Don't you? What about if it was an apple? I mean, you know, I mean, that sort of thing. It's I like, think you know so. what it is. I mean, she's accusing the airline of not telling her how frozen it was. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I mean, and she wants probably millions of dollars for pain and suffering. A jury will end up deciding this, but this is going to court. Uh, and, you know, I'd say now her, she'd get the, the blue iced ones. You know? <laughs> that, 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 if I got an ice cream sandwich that was blue iced, then I'd worry about that. It's interesting about that. I mean, uh, it, we're very litigious. You could sue anybody for anything. Very litigious crazy, society right? and that sort of thing. Take a little bit of responsibility. Um, uh, but, you know, that's plain and simple. And I'm sure that's what we'll learn is that, like, hey, uh, you should have known. It, but she'll probably get a free flight somewhere. In some European courts, if you're going to sue a company, you have to come up with the amount of money that you want in the lawsuit, which discourages a lot of people oh, from that's suing, which I think is something that should be implemented here. It will never happen because the legal lobbies are so strong that that's the Tort way they reform, make their money right, and yeah. their business. But to me, that makes the most sense. If I'm going to sue JetBlue for $5 million, I got to put up $5 million. And if I lose, they get my money. If I win, I get it, it, my money plus theirs. It's making it like a game show yeah. almost, if you think about mm -hmm. it. I like that. We'll go uh, stay up in D.C. where laws are made, but so are statues. There's one there. Now it's causing quite a stink. The bronze sculpture, it sits along aside other iconic monuments featuring at the National Mall. The D.C.'s latest tourist attraction is named the Resolute Desk. It depicts a large, soft-serve pile of poo sitting on top of former House Speaker Nancy <laughs> Pelosi's desk. 
The statue is allowed to actually stay there until the end of the month. That's according to a permit filed by the United States oh. Park Service. Now, just like lawsuits, uh, freedom of speech is also allowed. Yep. And I guess if you get a permit, that sort of thing is allowed to go there a, a, as well. I'm not sure if it's the most classy thing you want to go up and see, but it obviously tells a statement, right? I guess so. I, I, I'm just wondering why. Like, what is the point of this? I'm sure the person who put it together, and I'm sure that cost a fortune because it's a bronze statue. Yeah. Is and it for or against? Like that's what I that's what I can't figure I don't out. Is like, know. It, 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 like is it maybe it is for like to to make sure the point was made that that happened or that it's like showing. Well, I don't think that ever really happened. Uh, no, uh, but um, I can't. It, well, I've wanted to quit jobs this way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, my uncle Paul called it and said, "Oh, that ain't nothing. You should see me after shrimp scampi." Well, did you hear about the guy that got fired? <laughs> that's not right. No, no, the guy that right. got fired from Walmart. He went back it. to the Walmart and decided to relieve himself all over the potting soil. I mean, that just happens because if you don't even work at Walmart, right? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why? Why would you do that? I can understand for the nutrients, but I mean, you're, you're not doing anything. To, you're doing things for everybody, not your boss. Yeah, you but he, but and out of revenge because he got fired, he decided he would take revenge on the company. And that's and, all I need to know about that person, yes, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> keep, keep exactly. Out well, one of Amazon's top executives is defending the company's decision to go back to a five-day in-office work policy. They say anyone who does not support it can look for another job. Wow. CEO Matt Garman said nine out of ten workers support the return to office policy, which takes effect in January. Why in January? I don't know, but it takes effect in January. Some of Amazon's employees claim that having to return to the office is a waste of time when you factor in the commute. Amazon, the world's second largest <laughs> private employer behind Walmart, is the first to make employees return to their pre-COVID work schedules. I love you tell the boss, coming into work is a waste of time for me. I'm so, like, what world do we live in we um, can do that? Seriously, do you know how it takes me to commute? I mean, oh, we were, oh I was God. complaining this morning about the stoplights, <laughs> but that's just part of life. It's part of work, exactly. And I guess their argument would be, hey, look, you know, back in 2020, you said, let's start working from home because it was going to be this, and you let me do it for this long. Yes. Said I could live anywhere in the country. As a courtesy. Yeah. Not as a permanent exactly. option. So right? Think about that sort of thing when it, you know, uh, when it comes to these sort of jobs. Yeah. Listen, when you got to go, you got to go. And that <laughs> actually goes for whales featured at San, the uh, SeaWorld San Antonio Park. Audience members attending the Orca Show at SeaWorld San Antonio got more than they bargained for when a killer whale splashed the crowd after, well, going in the pool. <laughs> Everyone's reaction, a little mixture of shock, disgust, a little bit of amusement as well. SeaWorld announced back in 2016 that it actually would be ending its orca breeding program. And five orcas currently reside and they're actually being cared for at SeaWorld San Antonio. Okay, so uh, listen, if you want to see nature, that's when, there's a book that I read. And it explained everything um, when I was younger. It was called Everybody Poops. <laughs> And I learned so much. Am I right on that? Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Some uh, more yeah. than others, but uh, still. I, I love this that it actually happened. That's really what you want to do. And I know SeaWorld's going through a transformation because, as I just mentioned, about these orcas going away. But what a great, better way to see nature than right then and <laughs> that, there, right? Like one that. kid who's like, oh, no. Like, you, well, you, know, you I mean, growing up here in Orlando, like, I've sat front row at that. Yeah. And, you know, been part of there. But then as you get older, you're like, I'm not. No, 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 no. I know what a line that. is. Yeah. But that kid's just going, oh, no, that doo-doo wave coming. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could see Kim Kardashian and saying, oh, let's bottle that for skin let's bottle care. <laughs> mm. I, I kid you not. You know yeah. those, those orcas are smart. It knew what it was doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, so yeah, like, it uh, and I'm then today. he went to Walmart and did it on the soil. <laughs> <laughs> Do you notice a theme in all these shows? Yeah. It's very Who's strange. Putting this stuff together? We have so many of these stories about relieving ourselves. <laughs> Three crap stories. Yeah, yeah. That show's gone to crap, yes, but I said that sure months has. ago. Nah. So. Oh, my goodness. A New Jersey man is taking his search for a wife to New Heights. Mohammed Ibrahim's marital interest has been posted on billboards from Times Square to Toronto. The outdoor ads point to a website findmohammedawife.com where women can apply for a chance to go out on a date with a 30 year old they must fill out a questionnaire application which includes what do you think you bring to a relationship what are your deal breakers more than a thousand women have already submitted their applications uh, it, it, it's all about being seen right yes yeah. hey, hey, i'm gonna tell you i volunteer for this andrea mitch matt you guys be the judges okay so ladies i'm free and available you sit in your photo via our no. web, web page, Facebook page, social media. You yeah. sit in All the right. photo 
and we'll we'll take care of it. So they're gonna hook me up. Now all I right? don't know if you saw one of the uh, billboards on the, that we were showing, and uh, well, James is opposite of the one that was on top of the building. I'll let you go back and watch what it said. <laughs> there you go. That all right, one? well that one. <laughs> I promise to not. No, I promise oh. I'm not a. Oh, okay. But, but James oh. is is what we're trying to say. So be on the lookout. For sweet, that. sweet baby, don't don't find yourself a new baby mama. No, we, we, oh, no, no, no more kids. No I, more. I just you know. Hey. Uh, how right. many kids? Two, three. 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 three kids. Every three meeting he's fighting kids. with a baby. We got real talk, fact or fiction. We're going to be talking about the movie Woman of the Hour. Also doing it holiday crossovers. No need to we're go anywhere. Smashing together. What's great is brand new. Welcome back to Daily Flash. It's time for some real talk, fact or fiction. Yeah, this is a new segment that we're doing on the show. We all love movies and television mm -hmm. shows here on the show. So uh, we also like the good docudrama series right. and movies, bio dramas. So uh, it's always fun to find out what's true and what's not so true, what's been Hollywoodized. So this is our opportunity to find out what's fact and what's fiction yeah. in these new movies. We're taking a closer look at the new Netflix drama, Woman of the Hour. Take a look. Anna Kendrick directs and stars in this true story of a serial killer who ends up on the dating game show back in the late 1970s. Kendrick stars as an actress who chooses Rodney Alcala as her date while he's in the midst of a real-life cross-country murder spree. Yeah. And Cheryl Bradshaw, who she plays, is about to be his next victim. All right, so the question is, what is actually fact and what is actually fiction in the movie Woman of the Hour? Let's break it down for you right now because there was some... Uh, generalities given and characters made up. In the movie, Cheryl, spelled with a C, Cheryl Bradshaw is an aspiring actress with the uh, theater credentials, all from New York City. Now, this is actually fiction. In reality, well, little is actually known about the real Cheryl, spelled with an S, Bradshaw. She was introduced as the woman who once learned her living as a foot masseuse, and there's no record of her actually ever being an actress. A Cheryl Bradshaw, uh, Bradshaw was listed as a communications teacher in Arizona, but she died in 2004. Mm. So uh, that's a big difference, I, I would say, right yeah. there. Yeah, uh, the fact that there's very little known about her other than she was on this dating game show, but they really make a big deal in the movie that she's this aspiring actress who was well-trained on the East Coast, and she's struggling to find her footing in, in, in Los Angeles. And, and you know this, Matt, I'm sure you had, you had an agent as well. The agent, when she said she was going to quit, was kind of like, yeah. oh, no, please. Like, okay, go. <laughs> In reality, that's they, that's the stuff I picked up on. Yeah, yeah. Is that dealing with agents? They right. would never call you and say, don't go. Don't, no, please yeah. don't. They're like, whatever. Yeah. Bye. You, you've never done anything, yeah. but I want you to yeah. stay. stay. And, never then, and then she gets a last minute call. I've got this great opportunity <laughs> for you. Now that's real, because they try and sell yes, you on crap sure, you that they that. want you to just book. You end so. up in a Toyota commercial. Yeah. <laughs> well, you now, go. you know, that's not so bad. Uh, in the movie, Cheryl and Rodney go to a tiki lounge after taping their episode of The Dating Game. Now, in this particular scene, now this is the acting scene of the movie. We'll get to the tiki scene here in a second. Uh, they discuss Cheryl's acting career, and in the scene, Rodney attempts to order another drink, but Kendrick's character gives the waitress a look, yeah. and the uh, night comes to an end, but not before the two walk back to their cars in the studio parking lot. Now, this is fiction. In reality, this never happened, but producers did say Cheryl admitted to a creepy vibe and refused to go out on the date. In the movie, the two were given a trip to Carmel, California as a romantic getaway, but in reality, it was only a day trip to Six Flags Magic Mountain. <laughs> I mean, and that's Cheryl just as good, go. right? Yeah, somewhat, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so... But the parking lot scene was very dramatic. It was a good build-up. It had to give that. Yes. I mean, you had to see the, how freaked out she was about that. And, and again, these are the liberties that Hollywood yes. takes a lot of times. Of yes. course. And in the movie, Rodney is finally caught after a teenage runaway escapes his abuse and calls the police. This is mostly true. In 1979, Alcala, that's how you say it, right? Mm -hmm. Picked up a 15-year-old girl who was hitchhiking. Uh, uh, McHugh Monique. Hoyt. Monique. 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 Hoyt. 
managed to escape after being nearly killed. She convinced Rodney that she wanted to continue the relationship. She was able to get away from him and called police, but Rodney was gone before they arrived. The murder that finally put Akala behind bars happened in 1979 when he kidnapped a 12-year-old. The victim's friends were able to identify Rodney, and he was arrested for the final time. I, I looked up, so when, I, when these come out, I start doing Wikipedia. Me too. Yeah, yeah me too. right. And I'm like, what's real in here? Because uh, we just had the uh, the Menendez brothers thing come yeah. out, and I had to uh, educate my wife on it. I'm like, no, I lived through this, watched it on TV. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, this happened, this happened, this yeah. happened. And then you start going through it, and you're like, oh my god, how, how did they not catch this guy? But again, it was 1979, mm -hmm. so there was no like Facebook or anything to track somebody. And, and you think about this: uh, the dating game was a huge, huge TV show at yes. the time, and they were saying they are at least alluded to that he was actually killing during this time and had yeah. done it before for him to get on there. No vetting. I think now they vet contestants. Yes. Oh yeah. Up well, you're going to go through somebody's Facebook. You're going to go through their resume. You're going to you're going to find now it. today. Yeah. Yeah. Back then it was yeah. like, yeah, it sounds and interesting. You, you yeah. look like a good looking. And he was a good-looking guy good in looking. reality. And then they also talk about him working at the LA Times. He right. did as a typesetter, but in the movie, they have him as a photographer. If you watch it, too. Now, and, you know, we're telling you what's true and it's not true. Yeah. I think it was an okay movie. It kind of got really lazy at the end. I agree. Uh, it's just yes. like whenever they just, like, pop up the screen, you just have to, have to read it. It's yeah. like, would you run out of money? You can't do any more shooting. <laughs> no, it did sort of come like, Argh! and it was over. There is a character in this movie that was in the audience and noticed him uh, in the movie. Yeah. Yes. That was a completely made up character. And the reason why they wanted to do that is that she went to authorities and no one listened to her. Yeah. And that encompassed basically how many people went to the police talking about this guy, yes. saying, listen, you need to get this guy. And the police, in what their terms, didn't do anything at all. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's interesting to see how Hollywood really kind of turns a script and kind of dials yeah. up the volume to make things much more interesting. There's some really great parts to it, but I'm with you. I feel like I was expecting a little bit more and it sort of was a letdown at the very end. Isn't it nuts we had some really good serial killers in the 70s and 80s and now we don't have any good <laughs> well, ones? I think Ted Bundy was on the dating game, It was my understanding Ted yeah. Bundy was on this. And, and in Florida, as... Florida State. He went to Florida my State. My friend's right. mom uh, sold him shoes. I lived down the street from one of the houses and when I lived down in Utah. Did you really? I believe that, that, that he had done some stuff. Good. Matt, you got uh, doing it coming up, right? Yes, what are you talking we do, about? We, we are doing crossover movies because Halloween and Christmas are becoming the same thing. Uh, crossover holidays. Yes. Yes. And okay. we're going to help your home as well. Gators Hall helping it up. Halloween, Christmas, pool noodle hacks. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I am Matt Doolittle, and welcome to Doing It This Week. And guys, we are in a very interesting period, aren't we, folks? We are just after Halloween, but before Thanksgiving and heading into the holidays or Christmas or Hanukkah, Chinook, whatever you want to celebrate. So what film options do we have? Of course, there's this, the greatest Christmas movie of all time. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, that's most of our yes. fans, right? I mean, after a little bit too much eggnog, and I mean, come on, it's an iconic scene, even though he's a little nuts in, in real life. <laughs> I think most of our families are like that, but then there's this discussion that happens every year about this one. Sorry to waste your time. No problem at all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. That is frightful. Dum, da -dum, delightful. All right, that's the second greatest Christmas film of all time. And if I you hard. don't believe that, I'll start slapping your cheeks. Uh -uh. But it's kind of a horror film with Christmas involved. I mean, there's murder, there's all that. It's got a little bit of both, right? Sure. Then we got this classic. When I first saw it, when I was 12, I did fall asleep. But now I belovedly love it. Welcome to an extraordinary world filled with magic and wonder. Open your mind and let yourself go to a place where every day is Halloween and every night Jack Skellington I am the Pumpkin King! <laughs> dreams of something different. What is this? 
<laughs> so Nightmare Before Christmas set the standard of Christmas and Halloween coming together. I mean, heck, I, we got spirit Halloween stores turning into Christmas stores the next day. <laughs> now we're at this point where a film that has made viewers throw up, leave, screaming, be scared after about their choices in life, and have spent over $50 million is what the people want. I saw him today. Who? How can you be sure it was really him? I could feel it. Who's this Santa? He's scaring my kid. Yeah, he's scaring me too. Hey, Santa's handing out presents! So that was um, yeah. Terrifier 3. Terrifier I just, 3. I, 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 third one. I just, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with y'all. It was in, I was in theaters, you guys, and it was the biggest horror film opening of all time. I mean, rock and roll to the director, Damien Leon, but man, you, you need a hug. The actor <laughs> who plays the clown is David Howard Thornton. I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how y'all get through something like this, but, um, I mean, have fun doing it during the holidays with these crazy crossover films. I just, I, that Terrifier thing has just I, fascinated my mind. I agree. What do you guys think? It, well, I, I, I got to tell you, the last year, uh, the guy from uh, Stranger Things was Santa Claus, and he was this, yes. I can't think of the name of the movie really quick, but uh, it really freaks, it, it, it's, it's it like that genre. Santa Santa movie. It? Murder Santa. Violent, Violent, I don't want Murder Violent. Santa. Murder Santa. I, I don't need these things. I, I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to see this, and then. Uh, it was. It's just I don't. I don't get it. It's I mean, and it's two, the biggest movie in the world right now. Is Terrifier three? And if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, you're faced with the same option: Halloween right next to Christmas. Yeah, so the giant that, skeleton next exactly. to the Christmas tree. That's All right, thank about. you there, Matt. Let's talk about some trending stories. Yes, the sweet smelling Tom Ford fragrance Lost Cherry has become a fan favorite. Some beauty lovers even describe it as a scent that makes them happy. But little do they know. Its scent mimics the aroma of cadavers. Get out of town. Uh, a content creator revealed she had saved up 225 bucks to buy the fragrance during a trip to Hong Kong. She found out later that many people were comparing it to embalming fluid. Uh. Experts revealed that the fragrance can, in fact, mimic the scent of cadavers because of the ingredient benzaldehyde. It's used in food and or fragrances to create an almond or cherry taste Ew. or smell. It also happens to be the same chemical used during the embalming process. So do you smell better after you die if you take that sort of thing? I, that's weird, it's man. Strange, What's that it? one plant that opens up like every 15 years oh, and the, it smells like death? Yeah, the stinky plant. Stinky, you know uh, what I'm talking about? The, yes. Yeah, it's out uh, west, isn't it? Yes, like out in Albuquerque in that area? Yeah. It's, I think it's in California. California, okay. At one of the universities there, I think. But yes, it's the it death smells like It smells yes. like death. I mean, who wants to do that? And like, now that's the same stuff you put into... To, I don't think we want to know what goes into cologne or, or, or perfumes. $225. Right? <laughs> People are dying for this stuff. Can you just go to your local funeral home and yeah. say, hey, can I get a bottle of that embalming fluid? And, 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 and I, right here behind my... There is a factor of people that go, oh, if it's got embalming fluid, it's probably going to keep my body nice and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and fresh. No, they're right. You know that. And it's not, folks. It is not at all. Hey, we got more Flash coming up. Don't go anywhere. We love having you along. Yes. Even if you stink or not, don't put that perfume on. Yeah, we're talking about Amazon's new office hours. So yep. That should be kind of interesting. And we'll help our home with Gator. Keep those noodles. We'll tell you about it. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hello, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is your Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. Today's trends, tomorrow's talk. So glad to have you here. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to tell you, when I heard this news, I was like, uh, oh. uh, James, uh, free at last, free at last. Thank God we are free at last. <laughs> uh, how many times have y'all, and I know you are not, you don't freak them that much, but guys, I want to be thinking, how many times have you gone by the McDonald's and the, uh, the ice cream machine's broken? Oh, right? Every time. It, it's a joke. Every time. There's a website yeah. called McBroken, which tracks how long... <laughs> At any given time, 15% of the uh, ice cream machines at McDonald's are broken, okay? Is it conspiracy? It's a joke. Well, 
it actually is. Believe it or not. So the company called Taylor uh, Manufacturing made these McFlurry machines. They made a deal with McDonald's. Says, hey, look, these things will make your McFlurries. However, nobody is allowed to touch them except our people. Okay. Right? It's like when you buy a John Deere yes. tractor. Okay. You can't work on it. You can't work oh. on it. And so the franchisees are forced to build it, may, buy these, right? Okay. So they get them in there and they know what the problem is. They can see what the problem is. They're not allowed to touch them. What? They have to wait. And then there's, of course, a long wait to get these people to come in to fix these. That's why they're always broken, right? Yep, yep, yep. And matter of fact, there is, they even said, well, we'll update it where you can fix it through the internet. Well, even then it takes long. All right. Really? So this went all the way to the Supreme, or to uh, up to the U.S. Copyright Office, and they have just now passed a law that, that you are able, the, McF the uh, McDonald's franchisees are able to fix it for themselves and get oh third party people. So this is a big what? deal. Get your McFlurry, everybody. Boo! Boo! And you know what's even funny? The people called it's not ice cream. You're right. No, you're you're absolutely it's right. It's an right. ice cream food it's a, product. It's, it's, it's a yeah, it's like cheese. It's a vanilla product. Pro it's powder. Uh, <laughs> powder. Yeah. Is it? It's so, like a powder that's powder. mixed with water or something. You guys yeah. seen the places called I Fix It? You know that yeah. does your you iPhone. You break I Fix. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, well, they were part of the people that made this law uh, change the patent because they're like, really? hey, I Fix It, and another company called Public Knowledge. They both worked really hard to change this and helping out these franchisees. The franchisees want it hey look we want to fix it but we can't of so course. it's big news you know who made all the money off of that lawyers yes 100 percent 100 percent and uh and they, if you ever look at a mcflurry sometime it looks kind of you know delicious. like a well it looks delicious but they kind of whip it all the way up much like that new uh washington dc <laughs> yes. statue that is causing a quite of a stink yes. and perhaps maybe this is what the artist meant <laughs> it's a bronze sculpture it sits alongside other iconic uh monuments featured at the national mall but dc's latest tourist attraction is named the resolute desk it depicts a large soft serve pile of doo -doo. Doo -doo. it's on top of nancy uh, pelosi's former house speaker nancy pelosi's desk statue is actually allowed to stay there until uh, the end of the month because somebody did the right thing and filed a permit anybody's <sighs> allowed to do this with the united states park service so it's uh it, it, and it, this one's causing you know talk a, a but there are stuff like a stink <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit uh, but there are things like this that happen all the time all people the time. just going out and saying uh really what, the, what they're doing the question is like where did the money come from that for this because yeah. that, that clearly could not have been an inexpensive <laughs> bronze, bronze sculpture so and then where does it go after it's done yeah here? where does it sit does so, someone buy this i would imagine they probably would auction it off or whatever and now we would bronze my kids shoes anybody to bronze that yeah <laughs> it's right? a big different story exactly. right That's something john oliver is gonna buy i think yeah yeah <laughs> didn't he yeah he did that he buys he? all that stuff like and, and then he'll blow away. it up yeah. or something i, I could see stephen colbert probably thinking oh that'd be great in my living room it, it's a it's a political statement yeah. by all means and, and and that sort of thing so if it uh, if it works for him it works for him, it's, uh, this guy's pretty interested in it. Having just been in D.C., though, it's very weird the amount of things that people like do that think that they're going to get attention, like yeah. getting in front of the White House and all this, and everybody's like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know it, what you're doing here. It, why, why are you doing this? It, it's really, it's commemorating the January 6th uh, takeover. That's really, it says it right there on the, yeah. uh, on the side of it. So if you if you believe in that, oh, there you go. You got somebody uh, standing for you. Tell you what, we're going to stand for you. We got uh, today's trends and tomorrow's talks. We got a whole lot more of it. Yes. That's coming up right here. If you go anywhere where you miss out on it. They don't want to do, do that. You do. Don't go Now, anywhere. when we come back, I'm going to put something on this desk. No, you don't guys do that. No. This is Tim. Tim is all about time. And if you've ever had a chance to look into Tim's cold, dead eyes, you'll see that it's time for you to follow us on social media. Sure, there's 10,000 social sites out there, and we don't have the time to name them all. Seriously, just ask Tim. So take the time to look for Daily Flash TV on your favorite social sites and start following us. That's all the time, Tim. Goodbye. Welcome back to Daily Flash. And this week's Help My Home, we call on our favorite home improvement guy, Gator. Hey, this is Gator with a few easy hacks to help you help your home. I get a lot of questions on how to clean your dryer vent, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But you're going to need to get you a dryer vent cleaning kit. It's a little brush like this and a bunch of these little flexible extensions. Depending on how long you get it, they come in many different lengths. Mine's about 40 feet. I'm going to show you how it works right now. Locate your dryer vent on the outside of your house. They don't all look like this. This one has louvers that pop up when the dryer's on. They're all a little different, but you're going to want to remove this from the house. This one has four screws. So now that I got the cover removed, 
this is the pipe that the lint comes out of that the dryer vents and I can see just by sticking my hand in here right up here in the front I can already see there's a lot of lint in here so now I put together about 10 feet or so of this um, rod and I've got the brush on the end and I've attached it to the drill with the extension piece that comes with the kit first thing you want to do is go inside and turn your dryer on you got your dryer running this little brush is the exact same size as your dryer vent pipe you're going to want to stick this in and just start running your drill As you can see, it's big time dirty. Repeat this process until you got it cleaned out. This is all the lint that came out of my dryer line. And I can tell you right now that it's blowing twice as hard as it was. Clean your dryer vent. Took about 15 minutes. Here's a pro tip. Only run your drill in forward speed. Forward speed in forward speed and just pull it out. It's going to save on your electric bill and your dryer is going to work a whole lot better. Next, take a pool noodle, cut it to your desired length, put a slit down the middle, place it on the stalk of your trees, maybe your flowers. This is a lemon tree. This is going to help protect the stalk while it's growing when it's little and also help keep it holding up right. When you get this thing in the ground, this will keep your weed eater from hitting it, your lawnmower off of it, pool noodle on your little trees. Next. This is a great question, and there's tons of things that these ladders will do. I'm gonna start with the first thing that I like to do, and that's my tape measure. I like to hook it on this little bar right here. That way when I'm up here working, I can just reach down and grab my tape. If I don't have my tool belt on, you can sit on top of the ladder, but it's usually in the way. As soon as you get up here, you're gonna notice these holes. This little circle in the middle hold a quart of paint. It'll also hold a roll of tape. I like to put my screws here when I'm working. You can put your screwdriver in these holes, your pliers, your drill goes there, and this will hold your hammer. On the back of the ladder is a hook. This is where you hang your five-gallon paint cans. On the front of the ladder are two little slits. That's where your roller tray goes. It sits right here so that you can paint off of your ladder. Not all ladders are going to have these functions on the top. This is a Werner ladder. I've had this about 20 years. You get a ladder like this, and you're not going to have problems. I've used this almost every day. Next. I'm going to give you a tip on how to make your refrigerator run better and more efficient and sometimes it'll even cool better and that's cleaning your coils and it should be done at least once a year. If you have pets, sometimes more and it's simple and I'm going to show you right now. Let's go. All right, this is just your standard top freezer bottom refrigerator. Okay, open it up like this. Come to the bottom to this piece right here and it just pops right off with some little clips just like that. And even if you've got a double door refrigerator, it's going to be the exact same thing. Then you're going to want to look in this little gap right here, and you're going to see this coil, which is this black thing right here, and it goes all the way back. There's lots of dirt and dust on it. Go to your hardware store and get one of these. It's called a dryer vent lint cleaner, and use this to clean your coils on your fridge. Just like this. If you've got an older fridge, the coils will be on the back of the refrigerator exposed. Be sure to catch my home hacks and more right here on the Daily Flash. One of the most popular ways to enjoy the outdoors is with ATVs, dirt bikes, and side-by-sides. Safety expert Dwayne Taylor joins us with ways to help everyone make the most of their off-road adventures. Hi, Dwayne. Who wouldn't like to get outdoors and have an adventure on the trails with a vehicle like one of these side-by-sides, ATVs, or dirt bikes? But before you do, there's some things that you need to do to ensure your safety out there on the trails. First, get trained. The industry offers hands-on training for each of these vehicles, specific training. So if you want to learn how to operate a side-by-side, -side, you'll take a training. We also offer training for ATVs and dirt bikes. Should note that with ATVs and dirt bikes, there are kids-only classes as well. If you feel like you might want to get out on a trail and have an adventure in one of these vehicles, we recommend you visit responsiblerecreation.org to learn how to get this hands-on training and how to properly and properly operate these vehicles in the uh, environments for which they're intended. Should also note, if you don't have the opportunity to do a hands-on training, you can do a free e online e-course. And again, you can find all the information you need about that course on responsiblerecreation.org. Um, when you get to the trailhead and you're ready to go, you're gonna wanna do a couple things. One, you're gonna wanna do a vehicle check. Simply walk around the vehicle, Look at the tires, look at the wheels, look at the electronics. Uh, just make sure nothing's frayed, broken, or damaged. 
we know you can ride one of these vehicles further in an hour than you can walk in a day. So if something doesn't look right, address it before going out on the trails. The next thing you're going to do when the vehicle looks ready is put on all the appropriate safety gear. It's the same gear for all of these vehicles. First and foremost, and most importantly, you're going to want a Department of Transportation approved helmet. Once you have that helmet on, you're going to want eye protection. The goggles work great, but you need sufficient eye protection. Next, you're going to want long sleeves, full fingered gloves, sturdy pants, and over the ankle boots. That's the bare minimum that you should have on any time you operate any of these vehicles. Now, there are also products out there that can help augment your safety. If you, as you see, we have chest and back protectors. We have elbow guards, knee guards, motocross style boots um, that better protect your ankles. So at a minimum, always wear the appropriate safety gear, but consider adding more anytime you go out. Next, I, these vehicles are off-highway vehicles, and as such, they are designed to be operated only on trails and areas open to off-highway vehicles. Do not go off trail. If you do, you could cause resource issues, or you might even have the opportunity to come in, in contact with law enforcement officials who will give you a citation or a fine. Finally, I wish, would note that with respect to the ATVs and the side-by-sides, these vehicles are designed for off-highway vehicle use only and should not be operated on paved surface and are not appropriate to use on public roads. Uh, this is a dual sport mito motorcycle. It's perfectly appropriate, appropriate to ride these on roads as well as designated OHV trails. But as for ATVs and side-by-sides, off-road only. Again, visit responsiblerecreation.org to learn more. Well, it looks like the colder months on the horizon. Millions across the country are actually bracing for the annual cold and flu season. Joining us now with more is Dr. Jennifer Cottle. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Preparing for the upcoming cold and flu season in advance allows individuals and families to take preventative steps, reducing the risk of getting sick. You know, keeping essential items like Mucinex 12 hour on hand can make a big difference once symptoms start. Chest congestion is caused by excess mucus. Now, Mucinex 12 hour contains guafenicin that treats the cause of that congestion by thinning and loosening up that excess mucus for up to 12 hours, helping you kick it out of your system. Mucinex DM 12 hour combines guafenicin and dextromethorphan to suppress coughs while also loosening mucus, providing relief for up to 12 hours. As with any over-the-counter medication, follow the directions on the label. Use as directed, and if symptoms persist, consult your health care provider. Additionally, maintaining a healthy lifestyle is crucial. Sleep, a balanced diet, regular physical activity, and managing stress help keep your immune system strong. Visit mucinex.com for more information. Two stars are sharing their experience in a highly acclaimed movie that's been featured in 29 film festivals. Check this out. Don't miss What We Find on the Road, a coming-of-age story. On his 18th birthday, TJ receives a key from his estranged ex-con father, unlocking a 68 convertible and a challenge to drive across America to mend his sense of family. In select theaters now and streaming November 12th, this critically acclaimed film features Finn Haney, who won Best Lead Actor at the Pasadena International Film Festival for his role. Here he reflects on his experience. The real highlight of being part of this project was bringing TJ's story to life. I'm thrilled to share this journey with audiences. I hope it resonates with them as much as it did with me. Also featuring William Chris Sumter, best known for his role in Goosebumps. Here he shares what it meant to take part in this film. This was such a deeply rewarding experience and the film explores family dynamics and personal growth with such authenticity. And I'm proud of how we've captured TJ's journey. Can't wait for audiences to see it. To see the film and learn more, visit whatwefindontheroad.com. You know that children's lifestyles have drastically changed with less outdoor play and more screen time than ever before. It's actually having a major impact on their vision. Here's Felicia Timmerman from Cooper Vision. There's a MySight One Day contact lens, the first and only FDA-approved treatment to slow the progression of myopia in children 8 to 12 years old at the initiation of treatment. This is a soft, daily disposable contact lens, so meaning a fresh pair for that child to wear every day. It's going to provide clear vision, just like they would see in standard contact lenses or glasses, but simultaneously being able to slow down the progression of that myopia due to the embedded technology within the contact lens. So great vision, treatment, and a contact lens that allows them to live that active lifestyle. 
outside of the eye care provider, parents can go online to the MySight website. That's M-I-S-I-G-H-T dot com to learn more about myopia, the MySight One Day contact lens, as well as how to find an eye care provider in your community. If you're in the market for a new car, here's one that's been named a top contender. We're proud to announce that Motor Trend's 2025 SUV of the year is the Lincoln Nautilus. It stood out from competitors thanks to its elegant exterior, technologically advanced and luxurious interior, top safety rating, and excellent value. The Nautilus is the perfect combination of style and comfort and delivers a first-class driving experience. To learn more, go to MotorTrend.com or pick up the next issue of Motor Trend. Stick around. We have more today's trends and tomorrow's talk waiting for you. We're also going to tell you what you need to be streaming for this weekend. There's so much good stuff on right now. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How do you decide? Well, we're going to help you out. All that's coming up <laughs> right here on Daily Flash. Don't you go anywhere. Don't worry if you still have all that Halloween candy left over. We're going to take care of you for this weekend. This is where we actually give you our picks for streaming for the weekend. We tell you something you got to check out on your streaming services. First up, it's Andre. Okay, I binge watched this because I love this. My pick for this week is the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders Doc America's Sweethearts. Here we go, DCC. Yo, heads up. It's time. It's focus. Beautiful, classy, feminine. Everything would be perfect if I were that woman. It's a lot of pressure every single night. Our job is to make it look easy. Since I was little, Dallas Cowboys Shielders, that's what I want to do. I had no idea what these women go through oh, yeah. in yeah. order to be a part of this. And they don't get paid much. No, they get paid hardly anything. And especially when your cheerleading team is better than the actual team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's... <laughs> Matt <laughs> at dailyflashshow.com for uh, yeah, a I don't like the Cowboys. <laughs> yes. Alrighty, well, my pick this week, of course, it's something nerdy. It's the final season of Star Trek Below Decks Nerd. on Paramount+. Plus. Captain's Log. For once, everything's going better than expected. Ah, this is terrible! I wasn't sure how my junior officers would handle their new promotions. I don't want to get promoted. I want to stay charmingly unsubordinate! But they've shown remarkable composure. Ah! In the fifth and final season of Star Trek Below Decks, the crew of the USS Cerritos is take, it takes with closing the space portholes. Of course, uh, hilarity ensues, and I can't wait to see how the ending is. And I actually get to meet uh, Rod Roddenberry this weekend, okay. um, the son of the creator of Star Gene. Trek. Very yeah, cool. Gene Roddenberry. Very cool. All right, my pick, well, hey, we all need to sit down on a couch every once in a while yep. and do a little bit of shrinking. As therapist, I think we're all on a hot streak. Whoa, where are your sex boxes at work for you, little freak? Dress for the job you want. Wow, you better slow that down. This is why I hate to come out of my office. I think that Alice is worried about me. It's rough to realize your kid knows how fragile you are. Uh, Paul, do not do that. Yes. How are you so strong? I'm not fragile. Why don't you try and stick to conventional therapy? Jason Segal, he's a grieving therapist, has had enough, and he starts just telling his patients exactly what he thinks. And Harrison and Ford Harrison is Harrison Ford. <laughs> there you go. We got more flash tomorrow. See y'all then.